Viewpoints are an important part of Navisworks. They allow us to share views and get other people to see views that we've seen. So to set up viewpoints, click on the viewpoint tab. Here you can see a button to save viewpoint, pretty obvious. And you've also got the ability to record a video or an animation. So in this case, we're just going to do a save viewpoint. The save viewpoint tab opens and you can number your viewpoint. So we'll just use 01. You then click on your scene view. If the tab disappears, click on the save viewpoints tab and then click on the pin and then it won't automatically hide. Uh, we recommend leaving this open all the time. So you can navigate around. So I'm using the orbit tool here. I'm getting to one end of the car park structure. So I want to save that viewpoint. I can right click, save viewpoint. So there's two options. You can press the save viewpoint button or you can right click again, rename it. And here I'm going to basically zoom out. And now I want to create a top view. So I'm going to click on the top of the view cube. And then I'm going to use the compass. I'm going to rotate the wheel around till I get the model pretty much as a top plan view. And I'm going to zoom in on the actual building. And I'm going to use the pan tool and just position the view nice and screen. And then right click, save viewpoint, and we call that top. So it's a plan view. Now, you can click on the viewpoints to go back through them. So one, two, and then top. Now, if you remember the car park challenge in the previous exercise, we can use the orbit command to find the crane. So I want to be able to share this with somebody else. So I'll say here, here's the crane. So I'm going to right-click, save viewpoint, call it crane. Now I want to go find the other car. So let's see if I can find one more car. Uh, use the walk command. So there I can see a bit of red. So obviously there's a car hiding in there. So Porsche. So we can navigate to the Porsche. We'll set up a view, which gives it a good perspective. And then we're going to save that view, right click, save viewpoint, and we'll call it Porsche. Okay, so we go back to our previous view of the crane, and we'll see if we can spot another car. Oh, there's one hiding in the structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the car, use the select command, so pick the car. And then here's a good trick, if you use the uh, view cube, you can click on one edge of the view cube, and it will bring you to that object that's selected. So in this case, I've selected the Porsche. Again, I'm going to use the orbit command, Rotate around to view. Hit escape a few times to unselect. And then right click, save viewpoint, and we call this Merc. So now I've found three of the vehicles. It's great. I want to organize this into a folder or an album. So I'm going to right click, create new folder. We call this vehicles. So I can arrange my views into folders. So if I just click on a view, use the control key to pick multiples, and then just click and drag on the actual view symbol and drop it into the folder. So you can arrange all your views in folders. Now I want the top view to be an orthographic view. So if I go back to my viewpoint tab and I can change the view to orthographic, this makes it actually orthogonal. Just tweak it slightly so it's kind of straight. And then I'm going to right click and update. And when I update the view, you'll see the symbol change from a perspective symbol to an orthogonal symbol. Now one of the things we recommend is that you keep an eye on the field of view. It's like a fisheye lens, it changes your perspective. We recommend using between 95 and 100 degrees for the perspective views. So once you've got it the way you want it, make sure you right click and update. So we go back and look at the porch. As you make it smaller, you're effectively zooming into a tighter area. So I like this angle and I'm going to right click, update view. Now you may want to change your background. Some people like black, some people like different colors. So you can choose whatever color you like. Right click in the viewpoint and in this check background. So you can pick white, or you can pick something a bit more bold. So if you use aqua color, that's a bit too much. So we'll go back set of black. And one pe one, some people like to use horizon. So in the horizon mode, you're basically creating a, a virtual horizon. So here you can see an example, we just use the default colors. So as you rotate the model down, it looks like you're kind of, I've got a distant horizon. Personally, I prefer to use a graduated background. So I'm going to right click, click background pick graduated, and I usually set the top color to white. So pale blue at the bottom, click apply, and it gives a reasonable contrast to the model. Lights, there are a number of different lighting systems. We prefer to use the headlight, but if you play around, you can see the different features. So under lighting, you can do full lights, scene lights, or headlights. And again, if you find one you like, make sure you right click and save the viewpoint. So then you've got different render views. So this is a wireframe hidden line. 
and you've also got a full render. Now full render is going to use up all of your graphic card capability and it may appear very jumpy in a low spec laptop. I'll give you an example, this is the Mercedes. If you go to full render, you can see it loading up. Now as this computer moves around, you'll see some re reflections and some shadows. This is on a very powerful laptop. This may not work on a standard machine. So not recommended to use the render view.